no, it's a full time job, and they'd like it if you have a degree. Um, I think they'd like it if you have a background in hospitality, you know, like hotels, oh, stuff yeah. like that. And they'd like it if you were multilingual because the brothels are in several different countries. Hmm. So everybody is like ideal you know, for the business traveler. Yeah. Everyone's all sort of like excited to think, oh, we can, you know, like everyone's all excited about the prospect of, you know, having porking be your living. But ironically, you actually have to be very well qualified to go visit prostitutes in this particular setting. It's a classy, classy job in a weird way. Would you? Would I? Well, you got to ask a younger funk. Because a younger funk would say, yeah, like a 20-something 20, 20 funk. Sure. Uh -huh. If it's legal. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah. No, it's completely I'm not going to, like, go there to do that. But, yeah. uh, you know, if I'm in Chamonix and I was like, oh, look, mmm, uh, erotic cakes, I would go in. Maybe. I don't know. No, no, no. Like, I'm not talking about going to the prostitute and, oh, well, and paying yeah. for her service. I'm talking about would you take that job? Oh, would I? I don't know. It seems like a, you know, like, like you have to be a very stealth, like an FBI agent type, mm. you know, to, to do like that. It's like being a, a secret shopper. Yeah, I couldn't. <laughs> you know? I'd be I'd be too excited. I'd, <laughs> I'd be posting on Facebook all the time. I'd make Yelp reviews. <laughs> uh, no itchy burning sensations in the nether regions four days after this one. Four stars. A star for every day that you don't contract genital warts after your visit. Go on. <laughs> Ask about our specials. Um, <laughs> Wyoming Is has... that where you get to have sex with retards? <laughs> it could be. <laughs> it depends on this, the country, I think. Uh, Wyoming was named as the best state for retirement. Right, yeah. If you're a tumbleweed, it's great. <laughs> Wyoming, the other square. Well, rectangle. Uh... So many seniors retiring there. The new state bird might as well be changed to the vulture. I got a lot of guns there. Yeah. And old people. <laughs> what else? Monday was National Puppy Day. Yeah. I love puppies. And not just Kate Uptins. <laughs> like the Carl's Jr. commercials, too. Did you uh, celebrate National Puppy Day? Uh, Yeah, I have puppies. It's every day for me. That's, I don't yeah. need a holiday. I, th I think the holiday, National Puppy Day, is basically centered around it's sort of awareness of, A, how great dogs are, B, uh, of the fact that if you're going to get a puppy, you should adopt it as opposed to yeah. purchase it. It was a good thing. I liked it. I, I still believe, you know, in my heart of hearts that, like, dogs are the greatest thing on the face of the planet. I don't care if you're Gandhi or Mother Teresa or some other great notable humanitarian. Getting a dog will make you a better person. You'd be an even better version of Mother Teresa if you had a dog. I wonder if Mother Teresa did have a yeah, dog. Yeah, what do you feel about Gandhi's dog? I was going to ask you that. Yeah, I wonder what kind of... For some reason, I'm picturing... Uh, I, I would imagine Gandhi had a dachshund if he had a dog. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, no, I think dogs make you a better people. I also... Man, dogs have been scientifically proven to be man's best friend. They're the most successfully evolved creatures on the face of the planet because they found a way to make themselves indispensable to us as humans. That mother's love chemical that secretes in a mother's brain when she uh, comes into contact with her, with her baby, what's it called? It's not serotonin, uh, oxytocin, basically like the love chemical in your brain. You secrete that. And feel happy and you feel feelings of love when you just look at your dog. And you guess, and guess what? Your dog feels the same thing too. We have such an incredible symbiotic relationship with dogs. And they manage to make us feel good. And they serve us. And uh, dogs are the only thing you're ever going to meet that like you more than they like themselves. And they care about you more than they care about themselves. Dogs are the, the best. And if you ask me, uh, dogs are and will always be the closest thing we've got to proof that there's a creator that there's a god because dogs are the single greatest gift that has been placed on this earth for us and 
That had to come from somewhere. So wherever that came from, thank you. Because dogs rule. Victor Frankl lived through Auschwitz, a concentration camp. He wrote, man's search for meaning between torture, cold, and damn. Victor could have just given up and been resigned to his fate. But he used it to write a book that made the world a better place. Bethany Hamilton lost an arm surfing in a shark attack. And what she had to overcome was crazy in the aftermath. Nobody would have blamed her for taking a different path. But she's pro-surfing now, so what do you think of that? Helen Keller was an animal caged by being blind, deaf, and mute. But a teacher, Ann Sullivan, never gave up on the truth of what people say is impossible, it's just their own perception taught Helen how to speak and gave her life its direction, and if a woman can go from being considered to be legally an animal to a college grad activist, symbol of what's possible don't you think it's true that you might have more to you than whatever people told you you're not smart or strong enough to do you're giving up on ever being any better than this you're giving up on the idea that even more exists, giving up nothing on earth will end you faster cause when you lose hope, that's a real disaster you're giving up on ever being any better than this, you're giving up on the idea that even more exists mm. Give it up, nothing on earth will end you faster Cause when you lose hope, that's a real disaster mm. Yeah, so many people you see giving up Cause it's easy in the face, giving up the not living up to all the things that you had said you wanted to be When running away from challenge seems to be so much more easy Cause man's search for meaning means disbelieving means Not perceiving you're left to be in And you got something to offer that no one can take away It means not accepting what life hands you every single day And every way you write a story that just belongs to you So when asked to write your own story, what you gonna do? When asked to write your own story, what you gonna do? When asked to write your own story, what you gonna do? When asked to write your own story, what you gonna do? When asked to write your own story, what you gonna do? Got somebody to be right. Got somebody to be right. You're not. Fascinating subjects, interesting talk, and boobs and fart jokes. AD on iHeartRadio. Man, we haven't really, uh, as you finish up, the, there's been a lot of news recently. Let's uh, let's try and roll through a little bit more of it, and then we'll discuss the pros and cons of senior citizens owning guns. There's a campaign to get a woman on the twenty dollar bill. Mm, well, thanks to strip clubs, most guys I know have put many twenty dollar bills on women. If that helps, that's sort of the same thing, isn't it? No, it's not the same thing. Kim Jong Un will visit Russia. Mm. Vladimir Putin is preparing for his visit by picking out which shirt not to wear. It's like <laughs> Kim Jong Un and Vladimir Putin is like it's just sort of seems like like Vladimir Putin seems like a Bond villain, and you throw Kim Jong Un in there, like it it it's almost like an Austin Powers movie. Yeah, but Doctor it's, Evil. And- yeah, it's just scary because it's real. It's weird. Like the idea of those two getting together. It's the, I don't know. I think that 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 strikes fear into the heart and bowels of a lot of people. What else? Katy Perry hooked up with a member of Mumford and Sons. Yeah. <laughs> Their new song's called Believe. It's all about having faith that things can turn around. And uh, bearing in mind the fact that Mumford and Sons, just like five short years ago, were penniless folk musicians playing pubs for a meager, meager living. And now they're hooking up with uh, Katy Perry. Yeah, I think uh, taking their advice to keep the faith and believe, as their song suggests, probably not a bad idea. Seemed to work out for them. Uh, You're probably wondering which member of Mumford & Sons Katy Perry hooked up with. Uh, He's the one that plays the banjo with the beard, (laughs) (laughs) if that helps. Nope. (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) not so much. Okay, what else? Ryan Felipe. How do you yeah. say his last name? Philippe? No one, no one knows. We talked about this. This <sighs> is why his acting career went nowhere. Because people, you know, like don't want to say anything if they're going to run the risk of looking stupid by mispronouncing it. So casting directors were like, shall we get Ryan Philippe? And someone is like, Felipe? And <laughs> they were like, shall we get Zach Afron? <laughs> oh, well, Ryan Felipe says that uh, 
It says, one thing that led to his and Reese Witherspoon's divorce is the fact that they were too young when they got together. Yeah. Also, the fact that it's Hollywood, and I believe Reese put on at least 10 pounds, so there's that. What else? <laughs> Jean-Claude Van Damme's wife has filed for divorce. Mm. <laughs> so I guess to her, you should probably get the karate kid ready for this. <laughs> okay. All right, I'm ready. All right, set up the premise again. Uh, Jean-Claude Van Damme's wife has filed for divorce. Right, so I guess to her, Jean-Claude became <clears throat> expendable. It's the kick in the middle that makes it. What else? Andrew Dice Clay will get his own comedy series on Showtime. Oh! Oh! <laughs> yeah, it's expected to be the biggest hit of 1987. Would Besides you want it? your mama. Oh! <laughs> Would I watch it? I saw the last one when he was like, you know, old, and he's talking about his kids being old and stuff, and it's just like, okay, tried to get through you, buddy, but I can't get past the thirty-minute mark because you're uh, old. I heard he was gonna have like a a home improvement show, you know, the way Vanilla Ice was renovating. I homes pity and the stuff. tool. No, that's Mr. T. Mr. T has I pity the tool. I, I don't know. <laughs> Andrew Dice Clay, Hickory Dickory Dock. That lamp don't go with that clock. <laughs> what else? Sean Penn is quitting cigarettes. Yeah, well, let's hope the withdrawal doesn't suddenly put a damper on his famously sunny disposition. I got nothing to give up. Sucks. You like, you have nothing to give up? Nothing to give up. I, I sugar. It's gotta I be suppose. something. I don't drink. I don't smoke. Don't take drugs. I mean... You have I, quite I, a shoe I, collection. I do, <laughs> I do have quite a shoe collection. But that's not harming my health. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like... In fact, if, if anything, my shoe collection makes me happy. I'm the Imelda Marcos of, <laughs> of radio. I'm, I'm quitting looking at my uh, cellular device as much as oh. I use. Because my eyes are going... You know, your eyes are going, you're getting a, a double chin. Not you, just <laughs> like, you know, society in general. Your eyes are going, you're getting a double chin, and apparently real neck problems because that 60-degree angle that you tilt your head at when you look down at your device puts an incredible amount of tension on your neck that your neck wouldn't usually have. Like, devices are apparently in every way, shape, or form bad for your health and bad for your looks, too. I don't know, man. I would love to be able to cut down on the amount of time I spend looking at my device, but it's all been made part of the job description. You know, like mm. Snapchat, which, you know, like I knew it was going to be a thing, so I just stayed on it. Just, you know, I saw the way it was growing, and I was like, this is going to become a thing. When it first came out, it was like this teen sexting app, and I, I have a policy of getting an account on every form of new social media that pops up that looks like it's packing some heat because it took me forever to get on Twitter, and I don't want to miss any boats again because it's an integral part of a broadcast job now so like snapchat and uh it was a thing that i got on a couple years ago and i remember people being like yeah that'll never happen that's just the teen sexing at this and now we have station snapchat accounts it's this huge thing there's this big push to get people to sign up for snapchat and i uh, have been doing the i told you so dance around the office whenever the subject of snapchat comes up now so i can't i cannot wean myself off of the work i am expected to do that has now become part of my job description maybe we should get better health insurance and benefits like hey you're going to destroy my eyesight i'm going to get a double chin and i will probably need neck surgery at some point in the future because of my chosen profession as a guy that talks on a radio didn't see that one coming but it's happening i, I wish i yeah but i have nothing i could give up like i want to improve my health i don't have anything i could give up i mean you know i, I guess i could give up sugar i've been trying to eat less of that Unless stuff like that, but like it's one thing if you are in poor health and you can go, well, I could just cut out all the red meat or I could just cut out the smoking or stop drinking quite so much or not drink beer or only drink light beer all the like I'm kind of jealous of people that have a bunch of bad habits because they've got a they've got a much better jumping off point. Like for me, I just have to the only way I'm going to get healthier is to make lifestyle changes and who the hell wants to do that? I just want to like 
be able to quit smoking and drinking and have things miraculously turn around for me. I don't have that. Yet I feel like hell every single day. Explain that to me, Funkhauser. I don't get it. I don't think I don't it's fair. Know. Yeah. <sighs> Spend my life denying myself things that other people enjoy. <laughs> I still think I feel as crappy as they do when I wake up every single morning. I'm beginning to wonder. I mean, I've got no desire to smoke or drink is the problem. But, yeah, the other people get so much enjoyment out of it.